Welcome to Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. I'm so glad you're joining me today in Studio C. You know, all this month we've been talking about vision, and it's so important to begin a new year about thinking about the vision that God has in your heart. You know, He has more vision in you that He wants to birth in your heart, and I believe the study today is going to help you to do that. In fact, the title of our study today is Expanding Your Vision. But we're going to, before we begin, let's open in prayer. Father, I'm always so thankful for the opportunity to share your word with people that are studying along with me. Lord, I pray we invite your spirit to join us today to anoint what we say. Lord, to give us the words to say, and Lord, let it touch our hearts and change us. Every time we come before your word, Lord, we thank you that we can be changed and grow in strength and wisdom and understanding about your word so that we can be mature and be all that you've called us to be, Lord. I thank you for your blessing on this study today. Amen. Amen. Well, the title, like I said, is Expanding Your Vision. It's from my book, my new book, You Are Designed for Glorious Living. I've taken portion of one chapter out to, to break this down for you today. So before we go any farther, though, let's open the Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 12. I'm already there because we're going to start thinking about how important vision is. And, you know, really, instead of looking at where you've been or where you are, why not allow God to expand your vision of where you can go? That's exactly what Abraham did so many thousands of years ago. And the Bible tells us what God told him when he was 75 years old. Let's read it together. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 4 in the King James Bible, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4, So Ab Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. What was so special about this man named Abram? You may have heard of his name Abraham, but that was later on in when his walk with the Lord where God changed his name. But right now in this por part where we're getting to know him, his name was called Abram or I think that there's probably a different pronunciation for it, but out of all these people that had been born in the earth since creation, why did God choose him? Why did God choose to use him? Well, while we're searching this question, I discovered that he was born 20 generations from Adam in the 1948th year after creation. Hebrew commentaries tell us that the first 2,000 years from creation was called the era of desolation. And it was during this time period that Adam fell, Abel was murdered, and 10 generations were washed away in the flood, and then 10 more rebellious generations failed to seek and serve God. Then in the 2,000th year after creation, four years after the dispersion of Babel, and six years, I know you remember all of this, but it's so critical to see how God had a pinpointed moment in time. This was six years before the death of Noah. Abraham started to serve God, and this ushered in what has been called the dispensation of promise. You see, God had finally found someone on the earth that would obey him and walk by faith. And when Abraham left his country, his kindred, and, and the security of his father's house, he did not know where he was going. He was trusting God to direct him every step of the way. However, Abraham made the mistake of bringing his nephew on his journey, and it wasn't long before strife broke, broke out between these two groups of herdsmen. The conflict was resolved when Abraham and Lot separated. And it was at this point that Abraham was at a place where he could again hear from God, get clear in directions for his future. It was time to expand his vision. Let's go to Genesis chapter 13 and read verse 14 through 7 together. This is the King James Bible. It says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee I will give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Basically, God was telling Abraham, if you can see it, you can have it. 
And as he lifted up his eyes to look at all of the land to the north, the south, the east, and the west, he actually was expanding his vision. And that word expand means to increase the size, volume, quantity, scope of, or enlarge. And when Abraham walked the length and the breadth of the land, he was increasing the size of his vision. You know, each dusty step must have reminded him of God's amazing promise to make his seed as the dust of the earth. You see, there was no way that Abraham could even count the hairs on his own head, let alone the dust of the earth. But God was telling him that there were no limits when you walk in obedience to him. He was experiencing expansion. This reminds me of a military recruiting commercial that I once saw. The commercial showed images of young men and women going through a series of very strenuous exercises. In scene after scene, the soldiers were continually pushing themselves beyond what seemed humanly possible. And a voice on the commercial then said, if you keep pushing your limits, you won't have any. I love that. You know, the military gets and they realize that with proper training, discipline, and dedication, anyone can push their limits until there aren't any boundaries, only challenges. You see, instead of stopping at obstacles, a search soldier focuses on overcoming them. Why? Because failure is never an option. They know that every battle is another opportunity for victory. I want to encourage you with that today. Every battle that you're facing today is really an opportunity for victory. See it as an opportunity to expand your vision that realize that God wants to push you out, your limits out even farther. Now let's turn to Mark chapter 9. You see, the only limits we have are the ones that we place upon ourselves. Let's read Mark 9 and look at verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Are you there yet? I'm going to read it to you in the King James Bible. Just one verse. You could probably read the whole chapter. It's so powerful. We're going to just read this one verse. Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You see, faith in God's word opened the Red Sea, shut the lion's mouths, and opened the prison doors. We can never underestimate the power of belief. He said, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. There is no limit to those that put their trust in God. Now let's turn back to the book of Genesis. We're going to look at chapter 18. We're going to see some things today. You see, when God spoke to Abraham, he wasn't just thinking about Abraham. God had a plan to bless all the families of the earth through the seed of Abraham. You see, why, why is that? Because God's vision is always multi-generational and global. You see, the key ingredient to seeing this come to pass is made clear in this verse that we're going to read in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. And this is the words of God that he's talking about his servant Abraham. He says, For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. See, God had a promise that he gave Abraham, but it was conditional. Abraham had to, he knew this was a man that would teach his family. So the promise is conditional. Each generation after Abraham must keep, which means guard, protect, attend to the way of the Lord so that all the families of the earth can be blessed. God chose Abraham on purpose for his purpose because he knew that Abraham would be diligent to teach and command his children to keep the way of the Lord so that his blessing of promise could come upon all the families and the nations of the earth. You see, Abraham was faithful to teach his children the value of training each generation after them. We have to pass this on. You know, even in famine, his son Isaac prospered and received 100-fold increase in the same year that he sowed in the land. You can find that in Genesis chapter 26. And his children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all of their children continued the family tradition and walked in the blessing of God. Let's turn to Romans chapter 4 and see some more about this man named Abraham in the New Testament. You know, all of Abraham's children watched him operate in faith and follow the example that he learned firsthand from his God. I want us to read this together in Romans 4, verse 17 through 22. Romans 4, verse 17 through 22. This is the King James Bible. It says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, 
before whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. This is talking about Abraham. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. You see, Abraham learned everything he knew about faith from God. And since God called those things which be not as though they were in order to create the world by faith, then Abraham had to apply the same principle to become the father of many nations. He expanded his vision and trained his children because he understood the multi-generational vision of God. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want to tell you, show you something about it's how it's so important to continue to share with that next generation about the goodness of our wonderful God. You know, I heard this reminds me of a story that I, I heard about a child who was amazed by something that he saw in his grandmother's mantle. And the mantle stood a, was a glass bottle with a very small neck and it was a full grown red apple sitting at the bottom of that bottle. The boy examined the bottle to see if he had, it had a removable bottom or a seam in the back. But there was none of that like that. He couldn't figure out how that big apple got inside of that bottle. Then one day while walking in the garden, he saw a tree with a bottle attached to the end of a branch. And when he looked at it really closely, he recognized that there was a tiny apple growing inside of that bottle. Mystery solved. He understood this principle that I want you to hear about today. You want to know how to put God into your children, into your family? Surround them with his word when they're small. And then they, will, then they will keep it when they grow old. You see, children will thrive in an atmosphere of love and consistent godly living. Let's see this in Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to read verses 6 and 7 in the King James Bible. It says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by, thy, by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. That just covers about every activity of life. So when you sit down for a family meal, tell your child about God's vision to bless all the families and the nations of the earth, including your family. Then while walking with your child, you can share Bible stories and what it means to walk by faith. Always teach them about his love, his kindness, his peace when putting them down to sleep. And each time they rise up, impart your enthusiasm for God and the opportunities of each new day. You know, Abraham did that with his family. He carried on a tradition. You can carry on a tradition in your own family by training your children up in the way they should go, by showing them the word of God. You being in a studier of God's word or reader of God's word, meditating in God's word, and then transferring that passion to your own family. You'll never, never be disappointed because that's how you will expand the vision that God has for your own life. That's how you'll see the plans, the desires that you have in your own life come to pass. It's a process, but Abraham followed God. God called those things that be not as though they were, and so did Abraham. In fact, that happened every time he introduced himself to other people. My name is Abraham. That name meant father of a multitude. That was his vision to have a child and have a, gener have a, a family. And it came to pass. Those same principles that he applied there will work for any vision that you have in your own life. I want to encourage you today to never give up on the vision that God has placed in your heart. God gave it to you because he wants to see it fulfilled. And the only way that you'll be able to see it fulfilled, we've talked about it even last week, about how you have to believe it, you have to feed it, you have to receive it, you have to expect it to be expanded. It's going to be growing. Your vision will be growing every time you spend time in God's presence. I believe that your vision is growing even today. No matter what that vision is, there's no limit, there's no, nothing impossible when you look at God. I'm so thankful for His Word, and I pray that you've received something today that is going to change your life forever. Now, just before I close, I want to thank you, like I always like to acknowledge our partners for helping us to put this study together and helping us do everything we do here at Jesse Duplantis Ministries between all the different platforms that we're on and the 
the meetings that we go to, the television broadcasts that's reaching millions, all the different Spanish outreach, so many things that we're doing. You can find out more about that by going through our website if you don't already know that. But partners that are watching, thank you so much for being a partner and helping us. If you're not a partner, you can be by just going to our website and seeing all the ways are, are across the screen now so you can be a part of it if God is leading you to do that. Just know that every seed that's sown helps us to fulfill the vision that God's given this ministry, which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have a vision to reach people and change lives one soul at a time. And I believe that your life is being changed because of these teachings and, the, and all the different things that this ministry does every single day. Let me pray for you before we close today. Father, I thank you for every person that's been studying the word along with me. Touch them today, Lord. Ignite that vision in their heart. Give them a fire, Lord, for the, for the things that you're passionate about. Lord, let them to see that there's nothing that's impossible when they put their trust in you. Bless them today. Bless their family. Bless everything they touch. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you for watching today. We love being a blessing to you. So we don't want you to miss any of our new content. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you will know when we have posted something new. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Pretty easy. See you next time. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.